let's, 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 let's not play, boy. Let's get into a little game we like to call here. Tag, you are it. Look, this week opened up the franchise tag and the transition tags for teams. A lot of teams are dealing with cap issues. So I think we're going to see a lot of tags happening this season. We're going to play a game where we think about some of the major upcoming free agents and whether or not they're going to be tagged. I'm going to let you have the first one, Demarcus, because we're going to talk about this almost every single week. Dakota Prescott. Tag him. He's it. Um, I am not saying that they will have to tag him. They have until March 9th, I believe at like 4 p.m. or some arbitrary time to work out a deal, a long-term contract. If they don't get it done, he will be tagged. The, there is no way the Cowboys let him walk out the door. He is too good. There's no one better. And if you're if you're gonna pay him 37 million this year and you paid him 32 million or whatever it was last year, why not give him a long-term deal? And I'll say this really quickly because this is usually how people structure long-term deals, which is what his he and his agent wanted from the jump. They're like, if you tag him, this is the first year. If you tag him again, this is the second year. And those are the basis for the first two years of your contract. They usually take that total amount, turn a big chunk into a signing bonus, and then do the rest as your salary. And basically, Dak wanted four years like that. He wanted four years, 150-ish. So that's 30 plus a year, probably like 35 a year with a signing bonus. That They're basically going to give him half of that if they tag him, tag him twice. And so you might as well sign him because that helps you cap-wise more than anything else. So I, 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 I hope and I pray to God they'll get a deal done. I really do. They are stupid not to have had a deal done the year before his contract expired. Or but two. Like, he, he should have got signed early. Think about how cheap they could have signed Dak If they had gone to him in 2018 early. and said, we'll give you $130 million guaranteed after his second year or third year, whenever he can renegotiate, he would take that. But in no, it's that they paid... Jalen Smith, who's not looked as great. They played Demarcus Lawrence, who's not looked as great. They, they played, played Zeke. Ezekiel Elliott. Early, early. Way early and super long term. And so they paid the wrong guys first. You pay your quarterback first. You cannot have a D-line. You could be just fine. You could not have a great running back. You could be just fine. But if you don't have a quarterback, you are trash, even if the rest of your team is amazing. And they could have spread the cap hit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So now I have a player from your city. You're actually repping some of their gear right now. The Chicago Bears football, the NFC North. You know, they got Allen Robinson, who's going to be a free agent this offseason. Should we, he be tagged? We are going to tag the fuck out this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, he knows it. I know it. Every, we are going to tag the fuck out this nigga. Even if we don't keep him, we will tag and trade him. There's no way, similar to Dak, there's no way he walks out the door. He's our best receiver by far. And there are way too many other issues in flux. I have no idea why we won't sign him to a long-term deal. Like, there hasn't been, like, any leaks like Dak. Like, he wants more money. He wants more years. He wants less years. They've just been like, yeah, nah, bro. We'll talk to you later. Later is now. <laughs> Literally now. <laughs> and later is why he's tagged. Yeah, this situation, he's a great receiver. On a team with a better quarterback, he gets more recognition for being good. He still put up like several 1,000-yard seasons. Oh, I'm saying, that's the thing. He is that good with Mitchell Trubisky as quarterback, who basically can't. I can run an offense better than he can. No, you can't. Mm, you've never. Literally, no, you okay. can't. Whatever. I, uh, I'm just saying, like, I feel like Mitchell Trubisky might be the guy that get, get, kind of goes Ryan Tannehill on people. You have way more faith in him than most people do. I, it's like, it's not like he can't play football. He he fine at football, just not great at the quarterback thing. <laughs> I the think distinction. it's like, I think he is more Lamar Jackson than he is Patrick Mahomes. And people have been trying to make him look more Patrick Mahomes. Matt Nagy is a or, genius. He can or, figure it or out. Or even like he's more Josh Allen than Patrick Mahomes. If like two years ago you saw what Josh Allen was doing with his legs, etc. It's like we just don't give him the opportunity to do that as much. However, like he's gone, so I, I have no okay. skin in the game. Let's go back to the team you're really high on still from their Super Bowl win. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Chris Godwin. Tag or no tag? No tag backs. He's not getting tagged. He cannot get tagged because I think they're going to have to use their tag somewhere else, which 
it's just like it is what it is. You have A B, you can keep him for pretty cheap. You have Mike Evans. Scotty Miller looks fine. You still have Gronk. OJ Howard comes back from injury. It's just like And a team that needs to keep so many free agents, wide out is not the position that they need the tag at. It helps have that depth, but yeah, they yeah. need help at other places. Yeah. So one more for you. Uh, we're going to go to Shaq Barrett. Tag or no tag? Shaq Barrett is probably going to be the one that gets the tag for him. Like, I think that they will tag Shaq Barrett instead dead of Chris Godwin because they want to keep that defense together. And I think while they have fantastic defensive players, that is production that's going to be very hard for them to make up. And that is kind of the difficult spot they'll find themselves in. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. All right, I got one for you. Uh, Curtis Samuel with the Panthers. Mm, That's interesting. It depends, and I think no. I think no. The Panthers are in a kind of odd position right now. They have pieces like McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, who is fantastic, who can on his own almost carry a team. He was hurt almost all of last season. The year before, with mix of quarterbacks, he they were what eight and eight, I think that year. They bring in uh, Matt Rule. They weren't terrible that mm-hmm. last or six and were they six and ten? I say, I, I was just kind of shook if they fired Ron Rivera after eight and eight season. Oh, I wouldn't have been, but I think they were like six and ten somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, so few games away from being on the cusp of it, the playoffs, but playing a tough division and a tough conference, etc. But they had not gotten it done. But I don't think they, I don't think they do it. Uh, they have a precarious position to be in. I think at this point it makes more sense for the Panthers to try to be bad for a little while, like actually just be bad, as opposed to tagging him, paying him, etc. You McCaffrey is going to be his third year. He's a freaking fantastic talent. So they have to decide if they want to pay him long term. Because if you do it, you probably want to do it a little bit early, because. Apparently, paying running backs became a thing in vogue, whether or not it was the right decision again. Is it? It was. And I think they all convinced themselves, well... It was only in vogue for the Cowboys. Oh, no. (laughs) No, no, no. I don't mean that. I mean, a lot of players got big deals. I'm not saying they worked out. Le'Veon got his deal from the Jets. Zeke got his deal at the time. Both of those teams regret those deals. Saquon Barkley's going to get his deal, and it's going to influence the Panthers. And so I think they see that being their true future to spend their money on. The cap's going to be decreasing. Bridgewater's not the answer at quarterback. I don't think they tag Samuel. I think they say, save your money, because the NFL now allows them to roll cap over to the next season. So I think they say, save the money, let him go. We'll get a pick, a comp- compensatory draft pick back for losing him in free agency, and we'll be a better team by building assets in the long term. And so I say, no tag. Okay. Uh, let's talk Kenny Galladay. Um, this is a little bit, they should tag him. I don't think they will. They're a badly run team. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's Detroit. Um, they traded for Jared Goff. They gave up a, a decent amount, but not too much to get him. But I believe he comes with a big cap hit this year. Uh, he's on a huge deal. The Lions just signed, I believe, that their new. They have a new head coach, right? I can't think of his name. Yes, they do. We talked do. about this. Um, oh man, I can't remember his name, but I do remember he was talking about biting people's kneecaps and shins off in his uh, opening presser. Yeah. So, based on what I can't remember the guy's name, but based on what I remember about him, I don't think he's the kind of throw it around kind of guy, and I don't think that. I'm not sure that Jared Goff is that guy to do that. And so. I mean, every team needs a wide out one if you're going to win games. Do they think they're going to win games? I would hope so. Well, I mean, every team in the offseason convinces themselves, but there's some realist in the building who has to make the, the call. 
Kenny Galladay is a great talent. He is sometimes, though, up and down during the season. He can have huge games, six, seven catches, 150 yards, two touchdowns, and then really quiet games, two, three catches, 40 yards, no touchdowns. And so the inconsistent production was a problem. I'm not sure what the reason for that was. I don't watch a whole, I don't watch full length Lions games very often, not even on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and so it'd be hard to pinpoint what the reason for that is. I don't think it was Matt Stafford though. And so Jared Goff is not, I think it's clear, no one thinks he's as good as Matt Stafford, but based on the trade, just based on the trade deal. And so I am not sure that the coach wants to sling it around. And so I think the coach convinced them not to sign him to the tag. But I think just on pure talent, he should be tagged. All right, Shaq Griffin. Mm, no, not good enough. Just period, not good enough, um, in my opinion. I think the, the Seahawks, uh, I believe, have lots of other concerns. Their defense is bad. Exactly. They need the money to spend in other places. They have lots of other concerns. <laughs> Um, they got to protect Russ better. Um, so the they can't spend tag money on him. If they can get him to a deal, that'd be nice, but they should not tag him. No. Okay. I got one more for you here. Taylor Moten. Mm, that's the tackle for, is it the Panthers? Can't remember. Yeah, but he's an offensive lineman. Um, I say tag. He's probably one of the more under-the-radar names to be tagged given he plays in the trenches, but a uh, super talented player, plays a great, uh, a very, very important position on the field. Uh, whether or not the team short-term, long-term doing well, you want that player around uh, because even if your team's not doing well, he's a great trade asset. People need good fin- offensive linemen all the time. We just literally talked about how the Seahawks need some offensive linemen right now, and so I think he gets tagged. Okay. Yeah, so... Let's shift a little bit. Let's go back to Green Bay, your division, Aaron Jones. Oh, he's getting tagged. He is definitely getting tagged, and I think they're going to give him the transition tag only because it's weird. That's why I'm like, running backs don't really get paid. Man, I'm telling you, because the tag for Aaron Jones is only $8 million. Yeah, it's the average whatever, whatever. But really quickly, do you want to explain the difference between the transition and the traditional tag for some people who may not know? So the traditional tag does not allow you to talk to other teams at all. The transition tag would allow you to talk to other teams, but it would not will give your team the first right of refusal, basically, to whatever deal that you were offered. And I think the other difference is the franchise tag is the top three players averaged out in their salary at your position, and the transition is the top five. So it kind of the transition tag is usually cheaper, and but it also allows the other t- other people to bid and create more of a war. But I think there's just like no way for them to let Aaron Jones go after all the shit Rogers stirred up, right? And he was stirring up that shit for this particular purpose and issue. Is that like he is tired of losing great talent in free agency because they don't want to pay them in Green Bay. <laughs> 